It's Friday afternoon in the Houston Medical Center, and Ruby Rubin is just heading into work. Good girl. No, that's not Ruby. That's Ruby. She starts her shift by greeting her co-workers. How are you doing today? She puts on her <laughs> ID badge, and before long, she's out making the rounds. Hello. This is Ruby. Hi, Ruby. <laughs> Ruby's seven years old. She's a Labrador Retriever. She's here to lift the spirits of patients, a job which might include a game of fetch. Hey, you go. It's a treat for patients and work for Ruby, but it's a job she loves. Good to see you again, Ruby. This work requires her to be obedient and disciplined, qualities that she learned from her handler, Dorothy Ruman. I got into dogs because a two-year-old chocolate Labrador came with the package when I got married. We'd go hunting a lot, and every time I'd shoot a bird, his dog would take my bird to him. And I didn't like that, so I wanted my own dog to bring my own bird to me. And so I purchased my own puppy and came home and trained her and had my first gun dog. The hunting season is so short, I decided I wanted to do competitions with them. Dorothy trained two other competition dogs before adopting a very special black lab named Cole. Cole was my soulmate. She gave me a platform and she gave me a name in our sport. Ruby was her little sister and she raised Ruby and Ruby worshiped her. It was Cole who first taught Ruby what being a champion is all about. We have these great dogs, they're wonderful gifts, and we enjoy taking them out and, and using them for what they're bred to do. Fetch. Good girl, very good. So in your own house you have an obstacle course, heel. Very nice, good, drop, that's it right there. Ruby Long. trains in the field most weekends. Ruby. And practices those skills at home. That's it, very good. Ruby. So who says you can't train in a subdivision? Ruby! It's a talent nice. that runs in the family. Dixie. Ruby's little sister, Dixie, is Sit. just learning Ruby. the basics. Sit. Sit. Here. Heel. Sit. Sit. Whoops, I dropped one. Leave it. Sit. They have to sit for hours and they can't move. And that icy water when you're duck hunting, that's the beginning and the foundation of all of her training right there. The dog's training will be pushed to the limits at the Master National Retriever Competition being held this year at the Big Woods on the Trinity, also known as Doc McFarlane's Place. What a hunt test does is it takes elements of duck hunting and takes it to a schematized level. We can design technical ponds to see the skills that are necessary to be a successful hunting dog in a sort of a compact and shorter time frame. Over 800 dogs compete here from all over the nation. These dogs are the elite of the sport, having qualified at other regional hunt tests. But the whole event has a spirit of encouragement and good nature. Because the dogs don't compete against each other, they compete against a standard. It's a pass-fail test in a series of increasing difficulty over eight days with one goal, always bring back the bird. Now it's Ruby's turn. She watches closely as the marks are set. When she has her eye on the right mark, Dorothy gives her the cue. It's a clean retreat. Next, they aim for the live flyer. Ruby heads for the spot just where the bird came down, but there's a problem. The bird is not there. Dorothy gives the signal to start searching, boxing the area until Ruby picks up the scent. She still hasn't found the bird. Dorothy is worried. Where is this silly thing? Ruby is getting tired and starting to overheat in the afternoon Texas sun. If Ruby returns without a bird, it's all over. 
I just boxed that whole area. I just don't know where it is. This flyer has turned into a runner, and a simple retrieve is now a game of hide and seek. I can give her one more back and try one more time. <laughs> it moved. Well. Ruby finds the flyer, yeah. but she's exhausted and overheating. The judges give her a break to cool off. After a short rest and some water, Ruby goes for it and brings back the last two birds clean. It's a successful run, but it's taken a physical toll on Ruby. She got hot. Immediately, the judges said, put this dog in an air-conditioned vehicle and get her off the grounds. And so we came straight back, and she spent the whole afternoon on the bed. But this isn't the first time Ruby has felt a little down. For several months, uh, Ruby used to have dreams and she used to cry. I knew she was mourning for Cole. We lost her to hemangiosarcoma, and it's a cancer that, um, that sets on very quickly. We had 10 and a half years with her, and that was a blessing. She was a once-in-a-lifetime dog. After Cole died, a big hole was in our heart. We ran the week after with Ruby, and it was so amazing. She turned on. She ran a perfect series. It was like Ruby was running for Cole. She was always the sidekick. Now she was top dog, and she could shine to her fullest, and she did. After a good night's sleep, Ruby is back in the field to show off what she can do. Heel, that's it. Close. That's it. Ruby. <laughs> It's a flawless run that helps her secure yet another Master National title. But all the honors, awards, and trophies are no replacement for a quiet morning with the family and a real duck hunt. There are no judges or spectators here. here. Right here. Here. Hunting to us is a fun time to get out with the family, and we just get to put our hair down and just relax. As a trainer, I ask a lot of all of our dogs. This is kind of our reward because she's paid her dues. Let them run, let them do what they're bred to do. There they are. Go. The go. dogs love it because it's a new experience every time you go out. Ruby. It feels great to get a few ducks, and that's icing on the cake. The family snags a few birds for dinner and heads home. Nice hunt. Yeah. Fun. Fun hunt. It's just another day on the job for Ruby the she Retriever. Did. She had a very fun time.